How's it going, everyone? We are here for some Week 5 defense analysis. Jason was kind enough to throw some cash game and tournament defenses to slot into your lineups this week. Uh, how's it going, Jason? And and how does it? What's your vibe from this week? What's your anecdotal feel? What do you got in your soul? Well, I'm just like you. I mean, I don't see a real reason to pay down. Yeah. I, I really don't. I mean, Vikings are just, it really is. I mean, plug them in and out each week. It just seems to go that way. And at 4,900, that's not killing you. Um, especially with other defenses kind of around them. Yeah, and and you know maybe we're just sheep being herded around, but you know sometimes the sheep don't always get herded to slaughter. Sometimes they get you know they just get their coats you know shaved off and they feel better on a hot day. You know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> 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 I think I'm combining multiple uh, analogies there, but I hope I hope you all can understand what I'm trying to say here. Uh, per, per usual, we usually just don't. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you do like what we're doing in terms of actual, you know, knowledge instead of my crappy jokes that really are bad, as I've rewatched the shows, they're really bad. Really bad. I'm sorry for that. Um, but if you like what we're doing, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, check out our content on Daily Fantasy Cafe. Uh, we we do appreciate it. So anyhow, cash game defenses, Denver Broncos first one you're looking at. I like them as well. 5,100 here against the Falcons. What are you looking at? Um, I mean, one you got to look at, I, I think the Atlanta offense has, you know, overachieved and it's a lot based on their schedule. Um, you know, playing New Orleans, Oakland, Carolina, Tampa Bay through four weeks is certainly going to give you a high, you know, a high offense in numbers. Uh, now they're, they face really their first test, which is on the road, which gives Broncos a bump. Uh, they're allowing just 16 points per game this year. Um, you know, generating a ton of pressure over four sacks per game, forcing nearly two turnovers per game. 5,100, that's not a bad price. I think we look at defenses, and we usually saw them kind of in the 55, 5,600 range, which, you know, if that's not happening, there's no real need to pay down at defense right now. Um, I think if they were 55, 5,600, and you can get, you know, the Eagles at a $1,000 difference, who I like in a little bit, the Rams at 4,700, it makes more sense to kind of pay down uh, in cash games sometimes to do that. But at this point, when you're only talking a couple hundred dollars more, I'm going to take that 10 point safety, uh, especially with the Broncos, who just kind of continue to do that. Um, it's the only kind of logical way I see going in cash games right now. Certainly. Um, the other one you have mentioned here, another one I like Vikings, obviously, been just completely dominant through the first four weeks of the season. 4 0, crushing great quarterback after great quarterback. Cam Newton, Aaron Rodgers, Eli Manning, back to back to back. This is like Josh Donaldson on a hot streak. Uh, what are you looking at with Brock Osweiler and the Texans? Oh, uh, I mean, you look, I, I think obviously I like Lamar Miller. I like Will Fuller, DeAndre Hopkins, but I'm not looking at Brock Osweiler to kind of get those guys moving. I think it's just too tough of a matchup here on the road. Minnesota's just, you know, I, <laughs> I'm watching them week to week here. And as you mentioned, facing quarterbacks of Cam Newton, Eli Manning, Aaron Rodgers in consecutive weeks, they've allowed four total touchdowns in that span. I mean, that's impressive. Um, you know, they're scoring the most fantasy points per game as a defense this year. Nearly three takeaways per game, nearly four sacks per game. Uh, Osweiler is not a good QB. Um, I expect overall Minnesota to control the tempo of this game for the most part. Uh, as, I mean, another home game here, they're allowing 12.5 points per game. I don't know. I mean, I, I want to say they're a better overall defense than Denver at this point. I really do. Um, and I just think overall you can't really go wrong with either of these two defenses. Uh, if you want to ride the hot streak there with Minnesota in, in terms of them and their upside, you can certainly do that. Uh, I might be kind of just splitting my shares between those two guys this week. Yeah, I, I think unless you're trying to be really contrarian or, I mean, there are a few really nice GPP defenses, but overall I think in cash – uh, decisions made for you, especially with the Vikings only at 4,900. Uh, maybe, you know, the sites haven't priced them up like the best defense in the NFL, but they've certainly been playing that way. And when you just look at their roster construction, you know, their skill players on each level of the defense, it's just incredible right now. So uh, certainly like those plays. In terms of tournaments, if you want to swerve, uh, 
Patriots against the Browns certainly seems like a logical option. Browns starting Cody Kessler. Love Cody Kessler. Love Terrell Pryor. You know, I, I like Hugh Jackson. That's a tough matchup even at home. Yeah, it is. And you look at Vegas, I mean, team total right now of 18. Uh, Patriots are going to get Rob Ninkovich back, which certainly helps them out there. They've been a pretty lackluster defense, and I think it has a lot to do with really their offense and how they've played and put them in bad situations so far. Um, you look at, at the game against Miami, uh, they had some turnovers, but also it was a lot of catch-up mode for Miami and kind of just garbage time points. Um, you look at Cleveland, that uh, you kind of expect them to be playing from behind most of this game with Tom Brady back. That should get guys going around him. You expect Blunt to just kind of continue and, and roll through this defense. I like the players here on the Browns side. I like Duke Johnson, Terrell Pryor. Uh, Isaiah Crowell they, they've been playing well you know as boring as New England's defense has been this year they're still allowing just 15 points per game uh, given you know Cleveland's ability to turn the ball over uh, allow sacks with that offensive line I think this week is is one where we could see the Patriots upside uh, and have them kind of come through being 100 less than Minnesota that's a pretty severe swerve um, not my favorite move but I think if you're building multiple lineups and want to get some different exposure at defenses you can certainly go the Pats way so I kind of came to this conclusion on DraftKings, and I don't know what your thoughts on this now. I think you can get away with playing Duke Johnson and the Patriots defense in the same lineup a as a correlation, which sounds really strange. But, I mean, if they if the Browns get down really early and they're down like 30 to nothing, I mean, they, they're not going to be running the ball down the middle with Crowell the whole second half. They're going to be dumping it off to Duke Johnson. So he might see a career, or not a maybe a career high, but certainly a, a season high in touches this week. Maybe, maybe he sees, you know, 18 to 20 touches in, in a blowout. And I, I think especially if you're going Brady and Edelman or something like that, I, I think you can play Duke with the Patriots defense. I actually do too. I mean, I'm in agreement. I think you look last week, uh, Corral was obviously the more successful back in terms of fantasy production coming into the game. Uh, but Duke Johnson out snapped Crowell. Um, and I think, you know, you expect the Patriots to be up much, much more than the Redskins were on Cleveland. I mean, that was a fairly close game for most of it. So um, this one, I don't expect that. You expect the Patriots to be basically rolling efficiently with Brady back throughout the entire game. That forces Duke Johnson to be out there much more than he was. Um, especially given his kind of receiving talents. Absolutely. Uh, the next one here is a fun one. I, I This is like a clown show, the Rams versus the Bills. I just, I, I just see like arms flying all over the stadium and just like fireworks and like there's co everyone's eating cotton candy and just like it's just a wild atmosphere here. I don't know what's going to happen in this game, but – I think the defenses are in great positions. What, what's your take on this? I do too. I mean, I like the Bills. I like the Rams here. Low total. I mean, it's only a total of 40 between the two of them. Um, both these offenses, I mean, you, you look, Todd Gurley hasn't looked like himself. Um, obviously, the Buffalo Bills are missing Sammy Watkins. Both these defenses have some playmakers, especially in the secondary. I, I like their front seven as well. Um, both are relatively cheap. For me, I'm going to take the home team as kind of a, a little bit of a favorite here, um, especially with the Rams who do have some momentum rolling in, especially on the defensive side. You know, shutting down an Arizona offense on the road was very impressive. Uh, Football Outsiders has the Rams ranked as the ninth best defense, and I, I definitely like that. Uh, they've definitely shown that route. You and I, I mean, we both know, we both talked about a little bit over the last few days. This, is, this could be a, a time where the Rams laid down you know, they don't play like their usual selves. We've seen that in the past before. Um, and that's why they're just a GPP team um, that you can kind of target. But neither of these offenses really have tremendous upside. Um, and I just think overall, as you mentioned in, in your defensive pod for DraftKings, this could be one where defensive touchdowns and defensive, you know, turnovers could be flying. I, I mean, and you just you just throw Tavon Austin in the mix on punt returns. You just never know if the the Rex Ryan Bills are going to be pre prepared for anything like that. You don't know if the Rams are just so. It's so Rams as a Rams fan. It's so Rams to beat the you know the Cardinals, beat the Seahawks on the road, and then just you know lose thirty seven to nothing to the Bills. It, it's just so Rams. That would be so Rams if they did that. So I, I don't know. I love it. I love this game. I think it's going to be hilarious to watch. 
it's just going to be absolutely bonkers. Um, so last game here, Eagles lions. What, what are we looking at? 4,600 seems like, you know, pricings across all sites are, are a little underrated on, on the, uh, the Eagles right now. Yeah. I mean, I think you look, I mean, obviously on the road at, at Detroit, um, this Matthew Stafford led offense, not quite sure what to make of them. Uh, I think, you know, obviously they, they came out and tore up an indie secondary that was completely depleted. There was a lot of garbage time, a lot of kind of come from behind effort against Green Bay. So looking at that, it's like, is is Stafford in this offense really that good? Or was it kind of just luck for those two weeks he was good? Because you look, you expected more out of him against Chicago. You expected more against Tennessee. Now you get an Eagles team that obviously coming off the bye week, um, which they're fresh. They're playing really well. They're playing really well before um, that pass defense. I mean, per football outsiders, the third best so far this season, uh, negative 33% DVOA. And, and with the lines, I mean, you know what you're going to get. It's just really a ton of pass attempts because they can't run the ball. They wanted to get Washington more involved. That didn't happen. Theo Riddick's not a between the tackles runner. They're solid in defending um, backs in the passing game. They've also been turn, getting some turnovers. I mean, averaging two per game, averaging over three sacks per game. They've played three games this year. They haven't played four like some of the other teams, but holding teams to nine points per game and 274 yards is, is pretty damn good because uh, I don't know. I'm surprised. I mean, I just think there's a lot of athletes here, and because the, the pace has slowed down, it's not Chip Kelly there. This gives a, a little bit more of a break for this defense, and I think out of the three defenses that I have listed for GPPs, the Eagles are my favorite. One, because it's a little bit of a price difference from the rest, um, but I just think in terms of upside, they probably have the most. So Jason just said a lot of words there, and I I'm gonna do the caveman. Um, is Ben Roethlisberger better than Matthew Stafford? Yes. Is Antonio Brown better than Marvin Jones? Yes. Is you know D'Angelo Williams better than Theo Riddick? Yes. Is Todd Haley better than any coach in Lions history? Yes. Um, let's play the let's play the Eagles at 4600 guys. Let's do it. I am. I mean, that's who I'm coming down to. If I'm, I'm making some swerves of defense, the yeah. Eagles are going to be my team. I'm in. Uh, so I think that's kind of a good view and look of, of the landscape here. I, I really wouldn't suggest, you know, totally playing any other defenses than these uh, five and then the Bills. So, I mean, I really would get mad at you if I saw any of your lineups without these six defenses. So just know that uh, I'll be watching. Uh, while you're making your lineups, I'll have your computers open. And if I see you click on another defense, I'm going to send you spam emails. So uh, anyhow, uh, thanks for tuning in. We will check you guys in week six. As always, check out Daily Fantasy Cafe for all our sweet tools and content. And if you like what we're doing here, as mentioned, uh, give us a like and subscribe. Uh, we'll check you guys in week six.